All right, people, what's going on? Back again. Got a lot of a lot of stuff coming out, so I'm gonna be pumping out some videos. Hopefully, uh, every couple of days or every week, try to uh, get the mainstream back on the rails again. I'm starting to think this mainstream is more like a a, a stream of urine, and it's spraying on top of our heads. So, anyways. Um, what are you gonna do? Get an umbrella? You know? I'll we'll push back with some uh, logic. I'll we'll push them back with some logic. All right, we're gonna be talking about these plates, these tectonic plates. They're just sitting there doing nothing during the ice age except for growing plates. Lots of plates just growing, sitting there peaceful. And then um, we come into the interglacial. Sorry about that. Uh, let's see, uh, this missing energy behind plate tectonics. Ice age, plate tectonic expansion. It's an overlooked, uh, completely overlooked. That's why I kind of uh, been asked to uh, take care of these things. Move along the mainstream. Versus interglacial plate tectonic compression. That's what we're in right now. We're in the compression phase of plate tectonics. The energy, the missing energy, uh, known, uh, discovered, and uh, will be future known as the Shaughnessy force. Everybody's got to have a force, you know. So I'm like, why can't I, right? Um, all right, we're moving on at the speed of sound here. I'll be fading in and out, no big deal. So this is just basically the mechanics. <clears throat> I um, I agree with these mechanics. I agree with this this imagery, and um, it is uh, you know it's all about the mid ocean ridge, the uh, the the seabed flowing towards the continents. Usually the uh, you know they break left and break right for the most part. Um, you know, they just go right up underneath the uh, the continents, which, by the way, are pinned in place because of gravitational energies. Um, gravity inherently has a um, a balancing mechanism in it, built into it, and uh, that's kind of the way it is, you know. So uh, we're just going to cruise right along. I'll, I'll give you a couple of uh, images, you, you know, you've probably seen before, and um, here we go. We got a. Uh, it's called stratovolcanoes. So you got the, um, you know, you got the, you know, the the ocean floor, the seabed floor, whatever you want to call it, cruising towards the, uh, inching towards the the continent, and it obviously it's not going to push the continent. The continents are massive, you know, so they're just they're just giants, you know, probably ten thousand or you know uh, more mass than the, uh, the the seabed floor pushing towards it. So it goes down underneath. And then, uh, you know, it hits the magma, and then it flashes all the uh, orga organic components that are in the uh, seabed floor that's now hitting the hot magma, flashes into steam, boils the water off, creates pressure, goes up and blasts up underneath the uh, stratovolcano. And then it seals itself up again. Um, pretty neat little uh, vid here, uh, GIF. This is, uh, we're going to be doing the Indian continent. India is a subcontinent that pushes up against Asia, a full continent. And um, basically, we're going to try to not use that word too many times. So to sum it up, uh, you know, over time, India is being pushed up underneath the um, Himalaya mountains, so, you know, the Asia continent. Um, you know, but this is, this is what we're going to get into because uh, the mainstream geo uh, theoretical geophysics physicists think that it's just um, uh, uh, heat and pressure coming from the uh, mid-ocean ridges that is actually pushing all these things out but it's it's a little bit more than that there's a, there's a Shaughnessy theory uh, I call it the Shauna force for short and um, we're gonna get into that so this basically gives you a visual of what's going on right now today uh, all the time really and um, well, for the most part, during the interglacial period, you have your biggest uh, plate movements up against the continents. And um, 
This right here is the uh, a good image, a good picture of the uh, mid ocean ridges, and they're in red, red dark red, and uh, you know they just they, uh, the Atlantic one is the the lot just goes from pole to pole. Then you have uh, you know India, and then you have uh, you know uh, uh, the uh, Pacific Ocean, the Ring of Fire that's real famous. And it kind of goes up the uh, west coast of uh, California, right up into uh, uh, Alaska, and right over, in, you know, over into Asia. But um, again, these are uh, pretty big uh, uh, mid-ocean ridges. They basically bring in the new magma. That's the uh, the, the new magma comes into the uh, equation, and it causes the uh, plates the. The, the ocean plates to flow east and west, north and south, whatever which way the plates go. And then we have, um, we'll get into the, uh, the image of the Earth during an ice age because it has uh, trillions of tons of ice mass on both poles. And it actually squishes the planet down into a, um, into a uh, pumpkin shape. And uh, consequently, this, this, relaxes the, uh, this relaxes the tectonic plates. Um, if you can think about it, if, if uh, you got a little balloon here, it's kind of primitive, but in an ice age, if you squeeze the poles in, you'll see the uh, plates open up. So with the mid-ocean ridges able to uh, pump out more mass, more material, because the uh, you know the uh, the, the uh, subduction zones where the seabed sea, the seabed uh, flows into the uh, continents, that that stress is relieved. As the as the planet is being squished down by the ice mass, so it ends up um, you know, basically uh, oh, my my uh, things fall apart. But anyway, it basically allows the uh, mid ocean ridges to pump out more material, so you end up with larger plates during this particular time at the equatorial regions, and you know the latitudes higher and lower latitudes, but. <clears throat> Obviously, with the um, the poles being squished down, that's kind of what's going on. So moving right along here, this is the uh, these are the arrows that show what I just showed you on the balloon. You have the poles being crushed from the uh, top and bottom, and the uh, equatorial region or the latitudes that get pushed out. And as they get pushed out, the uh, the plates um, more or less lose that uh, that uh, compression force, and the mid ocean ridge magma comes out at a lot higher rate. So this goes on for four cycles of precession, 20, which is about 104,000 years on average. And then we, um, you know, it's a little bit more, um, uh, you know, then, then you go into the uh, interglacial. But this is another picture here of the uh, plate tectonic movements. Again, the poles are coming down, squishing in on the plates uh, from the poles, and then pushing the plates, um, flexing the plates out latitude-wise, or horizontally, whatever, which way you want to look at it. And um, that, that being said, there is, uh, you know, so it's, there's a lot of movement, and I think, I think it's probably, I, I'm not, I don't think there's many volcanoes going through this particular time, because if you think about it, it's really, you know, the, the plates are just, they're, they're getting large, but they're not really being pushed up underneath the, um, Underneath the continents, as you'll see in a few uh, more slides, we'll get into the mechanics there. Uh, round Earth interglacial period is the polar ice caps are melted. It's just you know it's the opposite of the uh, ice age. It's a spherical planet that we're almost into a complete spherical planet. As the ice caps melt, they will they are rising. Any scientist uh, you know that, that's in the business will tell you the GPS uh, coordinates and you know. Um, satellites that can that prove that these things are on the rise. The ocean itself is on the rise but the the uh, crust of the planet in the equatorial uh, region, the latitude regions, is actually uh, getting squished in. It's getting squished in by by ocean weight, increased ocean weight, you know, a transfer of ice weight to, to the uh, uh, water or ocean weight and it also um, it, 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 it also uh, pushes in on the uh, the crust, on the plates. So these plates have nowhere else to go except, you know, up underneath the continents. So when you have like India, a subcontinent, that 
actually has um, you know has no place to go. It can't go on. It doesn't. I mean, it's going under, but it's going under at a at a, at a huge amount of energy. It's actually heaving the uh, Himalayas up <clears throat> as it's um, going underneath the Asia uh, Eurasia plate. And this is more of a um, you know visual on the interglacial crust expansion at the poles and um, contracts at the equ equatorial region and um, like I said at the latitude so it's the exact opposite of me pulling my balloon you know squishing my balloon the uh, you know it's actually me pinching it you know grabbing it and squeezing and pulling it up like that that's what's going on with in the interglacial period so as you can visual visualize the uh, plates are being forced in <laughs> into each other you know, they're being forced into each other during an interglacial period. A lot more energy is being exerted, so you have a lot more volcanic activity, a lot more earthquakes, a lot more land movement in the interglacial uh, period at the equatorial uh, regions. So um, that's why we're seeing a lot of these volcanoes going off. You're seeing these big fissures open up in Iceland and, you know, three miles of just magma just pouring out. You know, the planet's, uh, you know, it's, it's flexing, it's, it's um, reconfiguring its shape based on the ice transfer, weight ice transfer into the, uh, into the ocean. And there's another, um, you know, explanation like the other one on the tectonic plates that this is the opposite of the ice age. This is, like I said, this is the interglacial period. Poles are going up and down. And the plates are being, you know, like I said, they're being squished in together, and they have, you know, they have to they have to go somewhere. So they end up um, the subduction zones basically take up a lot of it, but then when you have subcontinents coming into continents, you have a lot more uh, destructive forces going on, a lot more big earthquakes, uh, you know, down Chile, India, uh, I think up in. Um, at the uh, up in Ara uh, Iran, I mean, there's a, there's a big, big earthquakes in those areas because of the uh, subcontinents going into continents. And here's the uh, picture that we had earlier, and uh, this is what's going on right now because um, you know the plates are basically being compressed or being compressed into into shape. Now, this is the, the, the this is where we, uh, we we peel off from mainstream. And we're going off into Shaughnessy's theory here, as that this, the, the, it's the expansion and flexing, uh, expansion and contraction of the Earth that actually causes these large subcontinent continent collisions and pushes the mountains up higher. Mountains in the United States are rising. Mountains around the globe are rising. It, it, everything's rising up because of this uh, contraction going on right now, because the poles are rising. Uh, news flash that's you know right here at YouTube University you hearing it for the first time in this uh, particular interglacial period you know so uh, previous societies they um, they they used to manage plate tectonic mechanics they would build pyramids punch holes in uh, tectonic plates so uh, they punch holes in plates like uh, famous one there is Hawaii 180 degrees from Hawaii is the uh, is uh, Egypt and um, the, the uh, Nile Val Valley pyramids in particular? You got the uh, Giza Plateau pyramids. They they line up, they lens with the moon, they lower the gravitational field. Look at my other uh, videos on how gravity really works on the planet, and um, consequently the uh, you know it, it that's that's uh, you know uh, uh, plate tectonic management. You know, this is how they manage uh, previous high uh, high societies. I don't know what, what happened to us this last ice age. We just lost everything. Somebody got into lead mining. The lead got into the water. The frequency, the Schumann frequency went way too low, way too high. Uh, who knows? But, whoa, did we lose a lot of information. And, uh, you know, the, the learning institutions have become the church, and the church has become the learning institution. I can't keep up with it. So... Thank God we get the internet. We can crash through a lot of this uh, craziness and get the get the train back on the rails to some kind of, you know, logic, engineering logic, physics logic, you know. So uh, Shen lines up with uh, the Bermuda um, Island. Shen pyramids over there, massive pyramids, you know. And then you have um, the, in particular the uh, the one that controlled the uh, magma um, uh, hot hot spot 
under uh, under the Indian plate, which they try to manage that was the 180 degrees away from uh, um, you know, the Sun Pyramid is Sri Lanka, which is a little teardrop off the off the coast of India, and on there is a uh, a mountain called Mount Sajiria with lion claws, uh, some kind of paws that rival the size of the Sphinx in uh, Egypt. So, anyways, <clears throat> it's a lost there's a lost technology out there. Uh, in my book, I, I go over it. Um, my book is uh, on that particular uh, science, that's uh, Pyramid Gravity Force, and then I got my other science uh, on um, uh, uh, my new book that is uh, There Is Something About the Moon, co-wrote with uh, Wendy Salter, great author from uh, Great Britain, England in, in particular. And um, that's, that's uh, you hit these websites and you can go uh, you know check out the book. You can read the you can read it on Kindle for free if you're a Prime member on Amazon. So, uh, or, you, or if, if you're not even a Prime member, you can go open up the book, read half the book on a computer. So, yeah, it's not all about the money. Just trying to get the word out. There ain't, there ain't a lot of money in doing this. It's a passion of mine. That's why I'm doing it. So, um, let's see. So I think that's about it. Again, going over the uh, the balloon here. You know, just give you a little visual. You know, the plates. The plates are, uh, you know, they're, they're stuck together. You know, when they, when they, when you flex, you flex out in the interglacial. Uh, I mean, in the uh, ice age, the plates come apart. Right? Plates come apart. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, I get the rock. There you go. Plates come apart in the, uh, in the ice age. Everything gets squished down, and then the, in the uh, interglacial. Uh, hopefully, that'll stiff. Well, it's not gonna stick on there, is it? And then the interglacial, you get you get this type of uh, giant teardrop going on, and that's that's what's causing all the uh, commotion on the planet right now. Huge earthquakes, huge uh, tons of um, uh, volcanoes. I mean, uh, every volcano that could have gone off in the last 30 years, I think, has blown its lid. So uh, that's what's going on. Um, I'm here to explain why it's going on. It's not, you know this is this is what's going on. Is it is a compression in the ice age. Uh, compression, sorry, compression in the interglacial period, and an expansion of the plates in the ice age. It's just simple physics. You know, go grab a balloon, you got a basketball, the kids that toy ball, whatever, squish it. I mean, you, you know, you, you, you don't even have to do it. I mean, just watch these, uh, watch the videos and the uh, examples I put up. Again, John Shaughnessy here. Don't forget to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Hit me up with any questions, uh, you know, comments, whatever trying to uh, you know get some kind of a, a standard YouTube uh, presentation going on here I'm kind of all over the place you know uh, with uh, my presentation and uh, my technology I'm gonna get a I got my eyeball on a nice camera so I'll be scooping up one of those I got tons of uh, downloads I'm gonna be dumping them the next uh, year or so so you know they're just gonna be coming out randomly I sit down and do a PowerPoint I think the next one I'm doing is on um, Ooh, what's the next one I'm doing it on? Yeah, yeah, it escapes me. Anyways, I, I I got some I got a PowerPoint halfway built. Anyways, so anyways, uh, peace out and uh, remember, when the head comes away from the neck, it's over. <laughs>